One of the tools that Trow and Holden has been making the longest uh, are wedges and shims, or stone splitting tools. And some people call them plugs and feathers, pins and feathers. We generally refer to them as wedges and shims. Now we get a lot of phone calls on how to use them and how to determine what size to use. So there's a few variables here and probably a couple of the most important ones are the type of stone that the individual is working with, the size of the stone that the individual is working with, and what they want to do with the stone after they break it. If you just want to you know, break it up, you just break it up. I mean, you can drill a few holes and drive your wedges and shims in and, and let it come apart where she wants to come apart. If you want to control your breaks and you want good usable stone afterwards for some type of building project or walkway or patio or whatever, then it becomes a little bit more important on the, the size of the wedges and shims you use and the way you use them. Now we make uh, sizes from 3 eighths, half, 5 eighths, 3 quarter, right up through to a, a 2 inch hole. Uh, we have them in stock always up to at least 36 inches long and probably, you know, unless you're in a quarry application, you're not going to need anything that big. So we're going to concentrate more on the smaller sizes today. Uh, one thing you want to make sure that you want to bear in mind is that you're not going to uh, you know, attack the stone, you know, I mean, kind of look the stone over, try to figure out how hard it is, you know, uh, how that's going to tell you how easy it's going to break. Now, believe it or not, the harder the stone is, generally the better they respond to wedges and shims because they're, they're dense, they're thick, they're under pressure, and when they break, they crack nicely. Uh, the holes don't expand when you put the wedges and shims in so much, so you get a lot more push with a smaller uh, with a smaller hole size. So if you're working with a, with a hard stone, you're probably going to be looking at smaller hole sizes, smaller diameter holes. And uh, we're, we're going to uh, show you this at the end. We will split a stone. Now, some of the things that can happen is that you can blow out the top of the hole. That's going to be by either using too heavy of a hammer or putting too much pressure on that hole. So you want to start and drill your holes, put in your wedges and shims, start at number one and just bring it up snug. And you're going to do that from your first set to your last set. And the object here is to keep the pressure as evenly distributed throughout the length of, of your brake line as you can possibly do. So once you go through, you start over, you repeat the process. And it's, and it's just a, it's a, it's a Kind of a light tap, you know. You don't you don't want to drive it hard because you don't want to break that hole. You don't want to force a break to occur where you don't want it to break. So you just start and you just bring them up snug all the way, and you keep repeating that process. Now, if it after a pass or two, you're going to find that some holes are tight; they didn't loosen up, and you're going to be able to tell that because you're going to get a good solid ring off the hammer and, and uh, wedge, and you're going to get a good bounce off it. So when that happens, don't try to get anything more out of that one. Go to your next one. If that one goes up snug again, fine, bring it up snug. If it doesn't, go to your next one. Eventually, they're all going to be tight, or you're going to get your break. Now, if you if you don't get your break and they're all tight, then just let it set for a little while because they are working. And in a few minutes, you can go back and there'll be some more that are loose and you drive those in tight. And at that point, generally, you're going to have your break in the stone. Now, listen because you'll probably hear it before you'll actually see it. But irregardless, you're going to see a, a line, a break line, go from hold to hold to hold to hold. And that's exactly what you want. Now, if, you haven't, if you've taken your time, spaced your wedges and shims evenly, which is usually about every four inches, irregardless of what size you're, you're drilling, um, you're going to get a good, good usable face to work with, or two good usable faces to work with. Now, some things that can happen if you're hurrying the process too much is that you can, uh, like I said, blow out the top of the hole. It's like a little, little crater. And then, and that's not good because you've got to deal with that. And then uh, you to hide it or disguise it. You'll get a break that doesn't go all the way through from top to bottom of your stone. It goes to the bottom of the hole. 
maybe another three or four inches, and then it shoots off to one side or the other because there's less resistance that way, and it goes that way. So uh, that you want to watch for. Now, if you, if you use some type of a lubrication, a, a light grease of some type, on your wedges, it's better for your wedges. They'll last longer, and, and uh, you won't destroy the shims. They won't dig into the, to the shims as much, so you won't deform them. If you're driving them too deep, you'll maybe bend the ears on the shims over. Uh, that's not good. If you, you're hitting too hard or you're off hitting, then you can chip the heads of the wedges. You want to keep an eye on that. Uh, if that starts occurring or they start mushrooming just because of wear, then you want to be able to grind that and, and reestablish that good striking surface, which reminds me, always wear your safety glasses. We are now going to move along to the uh, part where we actually break the stone. Now we have pre-drilled the holes. We have seven holes here. Uh, we decided to go with the 5 8 hole size, which should be plenty adequate for this size stone. Uh, also because it's a very dense stone, it's a very hard stone. Uh, we've placed wedges and shims in. As you can see, the shims are pointed out away from the split. Uh, we've placed them every four inches, which we always recommend. Uh, we, when you put them in, you put your shims in as far as they'll go, and then start your wedge. And now uh, we're going to break it, and we're going to go as we discussed, from one right around to the other. Some will go more than others. And again, you notice I'm using, for this size, I'm using a pretty light hammer because we're, uh, we want to get a good break. We have a soft one there. So we're going to give that one a little extra. Go back to number one. As you can see, they are going. Now this one right here, because it's got a bad section right here, it's got a loose, it's very apt to pop off right here. We're going to lose this cap because there's not a lot of resistance right here. As you can see, it's starting to blow out along the edge and we'll probably lose a lot more right there. But by having the wedges and shims fairly close on each side of it, uh, it shouldn't affect the brake very much. You'll notice we're starting to get a little bit more of a ring now on the wedges. It's a pretty tough stone we're working with here. You probably couldn't hear it, but from here I could hear a little snicking noise on the stone. Did it again. Popped again. Now, if you look, you'll see there's a line. It's gone right from hole to hole. Some of these wedges have loosened right up completely. And there's our break. As you can see, Pretty much uniform all the way from the top, right straight through to the bottom. 